Voilà ce qu'Anor a écrit. Le salon de Barbier est près de la rivière. Le Barbier a un plumier rouge. La femme du Barbier s'est noyée. Translated, the barber shop is by the river. The barber has a red pencil box. The barber's wife has drowned. <laughs> Arnold, take your hat off. <laughs> so we can see from Arnold's haircut that he does not like his barber. <laughs> However, he's a hell of a quarterback. <laughs> Oh, here he is now. It's your daughter. Oh, what she want? Money? She doesn't tell me those things. <laughs> All you women stick together. Yes, yes, yes. Well, how you doing, Nicole? You know, I love you very much, and you owe me a letter. Uh-huh. No, you're not. No. I, uh, <laughs> Look, um... We'll talk about this another time, okay? Okay. Get me a plane ticket to Washington, D.C., please. Sometime soon? Now. Scotty, where on earth are you going? Washington. When? Now? Why? Well, there's this conference, dear, that uh, I promised I would be at, and I forgot, and... It's, um, this morning it started, and I'm late. What kind of conference? Uh, it's French professors. They're changing the language. They're changing French? Who? Uh, the forces of linguistic idiocy. Oh. I'm going to make a speech. Then I've got to cancel Frank and Margaret Westy. They were coming to dinner tonight. They eat too much anyway, honey. Mm -hmm. Go.
Long assignment? Sick leave. Don't breathe on me. Step up to the control center, please. Right hand on the illuminated sensor, please. Right hand on the illuminated sensor. Thank you. State your mother's maiden name, please. Well, if the chromosome and the genetic code is correct, why do I need my mother's maiden name? That is not your mother's maiden name. Boulay. Identity confirmed. Thank you. Mr. Director, an agent with lifetime identification is asking to see you. Alexander Scott. Scotty? I haven't seen him in 25 years. Show the man in, Effie, darling. Oh, is that real? Well, for heavens, on a murder trip. Oh. Get out. Get out! Anything wrong? You recruited my daughter. Now, unless you unrecruit her, I'm going to break your face. Get out! Get out! She made me promise not to tell you. Who are you going to be loyal to? Your old partner or some new recruit? She just wanted a chance to get through basic without the pressure of her father being dead set against her, which she knew that you would be. Of course, I thought she was exaggerating. Well, she wasn't. While we're on the subject, how come you didn't know anything about what she was up to, you, the doting parent? Because she's slick. That's why. Just like me. Every week, letters came from medical school saying how wonderful it was, how much she enjoyed it here. Uh, that's eyes only stuff. Do you mind? Listen. Stand up! No! Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Oh, no. Put that. No, don't do that. That's dangerous. You better believe it. It's dull as a stick, just like you. That's why it's dangerous. You might poke yourself in the foot. You bought these in Hong Kong from Dr. Fong, didn't you? Uh-huh. When we were in the shop, I told you, I said, don't buy these. They're fake. And I told you someday I'd have a corner office to put them in, didn't I? Speaking of a corner office, you're sending my daughter to Vienna. She's going to be on an assignment. They're going to throw her out of moving Ferraris. Why couldn't you have just given her an office, put her in charge of 35 people for your friend? When you enlisted, did somebody call your mommy and daddy? Did somebody call mine? Get real. That's different. That is a real African piece in your hand. Genuine. Oh, that's different. You want to put something on that chin? Anyway, you ought to be proud. She went through basic like a dose of salt. Top for class. But what I'm saying is that shooting on the pistol range is not the same as being on the rooftop with somebody shooting to kill you. That's what I'm saying. And I hate to rub your nose in it, but uh, she scored harder than you did on everything. Get out of here. Yes, she certainly did. You Where's want the stats? I'll give them to you. I got to memorize. I figured with her here, I was going to run into you someday. Obstacle course. Yes. Huh? Yes, she did. Hand to hand. Well, for her weight, yes. Sure. Karate. <laughs> well, you sucked in karate. No, I did me. not you either. Did so you oh, were a Marksmanship. Man. Marksmanship. All right. Tell me about Pistol. it. Pistol. What? Rifle. Machine gun. And a couple that you've never even heard of. Well, they're going to Vienna to babysit. A couple of Russian nationals that are emigrating to the United States. It's a piece of cake milk run, I'll bet. Yes, and I'm sending her with the best young male trainee that's ever come through the program. This kid, 
He's, he's you and me rolled into one is what he is. He's an athlete. He's a Phi Beta Kappa, bright, articulate. Mm -hmm. He's a natural. He's your son. Uh, yes, he is. How did you guess? <laughs> if he's your son, he has your genes. Yes. Uh -huh. And your horniness. I thought that was coming. I don't believe that came out of your mouth. You put him with my Listen daughter. to me. Listen huh? to me carefully. If he did make a pass at mm -hmm. your daughter, which he won't because he has my coolness genes as well, mm -hmm. she'd cut him off at the exactly. knees. Don't you know your exactly. own child? I mean, have you met recently? Whoa. Well, the halls of ivy seem to agree with you. You have that happy Buddha look. Thank you. <laughs> Is that a hairpiece? No, it is not a hairpiece. If I was going to wear a hairpiece, I could do better than this. Well, I have to congratulate you. You don't look as desiccated as I thought you would be. Well, I'm delighted to look upon your face as well. Another thing, Nicole is not going to Vienna. You may want to take this with you and look it over. You can drop it in the mail any time after you've signed it. What? Reenlistment papers. Well, I, not as a full-time agent or anything like that. Just, we have a strong need for senior consultants. You may want to reconsider this because I'm telling you now that we have the greatest medical, uh, medical program in this part of the country. <clears throat> Desiccated. Try me. No, you're not Maybe. supposed to fold mutilated spin to your father. Let's talk. I had enough school, Dad. It was time to do something with my life. Well, it's not for me, it's for your mother. Oh, please. This is not what she wants. This is what you want. But this is what I want. I, I don't think you understand, really, that these people are playing for real. I mean, these are people who could very well drug you up to find out the truth, and then you wind up being tossed out. Look, I'm not kidding. You could be pushed out of a moving Ferrari, and then you'd hate me for it. You're probably right. You want to shoot now? No, I don't want to shoot. Hey, it's your fault, Dad. I'm not talking about your silly stories. You made me feel a sense of duty. Keep your head down now. Pull it up. Yeah, but can't you just go out and do something like maybe save the whales? You could get trampled to death saving whales. It's an overcrowded field. Ha, 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 ha. Keep your head down, Dad. Through there. All right, come on. Now keep your legs up. Listen, the Cold War is over, honey. Don't you understand that? The world is now safe for democracy. Kelly and I made sure that I don't even know what spies do today. And what about your mother? Your mother finds out about this, she's gonna kill herself. And then she's gonna kill me. Because I lied to her. Your mother thinks I'm away at some linguistics conference. Don't you feel bad about that? And didn't you always say that I could do anything and be anything that I wanted? Exactly. Right. And wasn't that you that, this, that said that there weren't any restrictions on me because I was a girl, right? Yes. Oh, but. And you do believe in my ability and my intelligence, right? Of course I do. Well, then, like father, like daughter. <laughs> and I'm going to Vienna, and nothing's going to happen to me. Okay? Oh, Dad. I think it's time to join a gym. Right. <laughs> Letzter Aufruf des Passagiersenners zum Ausgang 5.
Bitte, let's start off. You're Robinson, correct? Correct. I'm Scott. Welcome to Vienna. Thank you. Now, let me grab that for you. Well, you certainly, you, uh, you look like your pictures. Oh, you do too. I think I'd know that jawline anywhere. Uh, what's wrong with, with my jawline? <laughs> Nothing, it's perfect. But of course, everything is supposed to be perfect about you, based on your father's letters to my father. Ready to go? Okay. Uh, Victor and Santina Reznikov arrive at 1 p.m. by boat from Budapest. Two agents from our uh, Budapest office will pick them up, clip them to customs, and put them in a taxi. That's when uh, we begin surveillance. All right, now, you and I can pose as honeymooning Americans, which means uh, we'll have to display occasional amounts of affection. Yeah, well, it's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Beg your pardon? It's a joke. I've been briefed. This assignment is baby sleep. Oh, yeah, right. It's absolute baby sleep. Absolutely. Uh, well, look, we've got a little bit of time before we uh, have to be at the uh, Hydrofoil dock. I can show you around Vienna if you like. I've been to Vienna before. Can I ask you a question? Are you actually and in fact in charge of this team? No, I'm not. Good. Neither are you. Of course not. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. What kind of flavor you want?
throw this, please. Oh, yeah, no blue tibia. Yeah, no blue tibia. Thank you. Thank you. No, 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 thank you, thank you. This is agency business. You're going home. Not without my daughter, I'm not. Well, while we're on the subject, what are you doing here? I? Yeah. You, you I... wouldn't be here if this was a piece of cake milk run. You're worried about your kid the same no. as me. No. What? Please, just go home. Field operations. I do this sometimes. I check on young agents, see how they're doing, take a fatherly interest. It's, I, I belong here. You're sneaking around, tailing these kids, wearing one of my old hats. You spooked me. I was doing fine. I sailed into my office with smoke coming out of your ears. Now I'm worried. Exactly. Not about them. They're fine. They're ready. I just. We, uh. Early this year, we lost a couple of green kids in a milk run. This is supposed to be a milk run that anything can go wrong, and usually does. Not this time. I'm going to see to it that it doesn't. And I am me. And so am mm -hmm. I. Oh. So am I. Now, tell me who, what, when, and why. The guy's name is Victor Reznikov. A man of science. Uh, he's Russian. The woman's his wife. Newly married. Yeah, how'd you know? Kissing and hugging. No, look, he's a scientist. He's important. He is not important. He's a biologist. He's, he's a bug man. He waltzed up to my man in Moscow and said, please, could I come to the United States? How about it? And the State Department says, okay, we'll take him. That's it. End of drama. There's more. No. The Cold War is over. Russia's broke, in case you haven't read a newspaper. This guy's out of a job. Russia doesn't care. Not about some person that... Uh, Looks at bugs, counts the hairs on their collective rear end. Why here? Why not straight to the U.S.? This bride wanted a honeymoon uh, in romantic Vienna. I needed a young couple to tag along after him a couple of days and then make contact. And if that's not a milk run, I don't know what is. You put my daughter on the honeymoon with your kid. Are you going to start with me on that again? Look, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, man, but this this picture with the Russians... This, the, the picture doesn't look correct. Oh, please. You and your famous intuition. Well, you always trusted my intuition before. Yeah, but uh, that was then. But I'm smarter now. I wish I could say the same. where we're staying? Um, this is where I'm staying. This is where the kids are staying. This is where the Reznikovs are staying. You, on the other hand, are staying in the lobby until this nice concierge over here gets you a cab back the to the airport. The only thing the Thank concierge you. is going to do for me is send to the airport to get my bag because I'm going over and register. You can't. Why can't and I? They are booked solid. That's it. Well, then you have a roommate.
Oh, well, you look at all this technology. We never had this. Time marches on. And you marches out, please. Thank you. <laughs> These are the Russians? Yeah. There are four doors down the hall. Where are the kids? They're right next door. You stay away from them. Why should I? Because I don't want them to think I don't trust them. It's part of the drill, all right? Uh, may I use your phone? Yeah. Oh, you gonna you gonna call for an airplane ticket? I can help you with that. I have connections. Calling my wife. Oh, yeah. Country code. Country what are you doing? Darling, Nobody darling. does that anymore. Oh, what? Here. Just punch pound. Punch pound and use that. Well, you sure have changed. How so? Well, you used to hate paperwork. I still hate paperwork. Mm -hmm. That's not true at all. You enjoy this. You used to fly by the seat of your pants, and now you got all this high tech stuff around here, and you're doing paperwork. You're not my hero anymore. Hello, Lily? Lily? Yeah. Hi, honey. No, no, I. Well, the reason why I'm talking this way, dear, is because I am not in Washington, D.C. anymore. I'm in Paris. Paris? No, dear. No, listen, listen to me carefully. Listen to me, hon. Everything was going fine with the conference. It's just that this one professor from the University of Paris is... I mean, the man is a saboteur, dear. Hold it, J just, just one second. No, 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 no café noir. Café crème, s'il vous plaît. Merci, merci. Yeah, I'm staying outside of a café here. But anyway, you got into this terrible argument, dear. And the French lexicographers, they are... Lily, you have to let me... Look, I'll tell you... Hmm? Static? Yeah. It's, it's getting worse, huh? I'll call you back when I get settled. Well, that was a snively craven performance. It's a snively craven performance because of what I was. All I know is my wife is going to kill me because I was a spy, and she's going to say, your daughter's a spy because you were a spy, and I'm in big trouble. <laughs> my heart goes out to you, but it was still a snively craven. Listen, uh, about this bed, uh, are you going to call up and have them deliver another bed to go into this room? Because uh, this is kind of small for two grown men with their legs on each other. You don't like the bed? I don't want to sleep with I my thought it was a good there. size for one person, me, sleeping in it. Uh, by the way, um, what kind of beds are the children sleeping in? Mm, twins. <sighs> Robinson, come on. I'd like to get in there sometime today. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh I, I, I wouldn't go in there right now. <sighs> ah, vielen Dank. <laughs> you have got... What do you do, sleep in the buff and you're afraid I'm going to get turned on? You know, what I sleep in? None of your business, okay? I just like my privacy, that's all. I'm all. just a little concerned about what you have planned for yourself over there. I, uh, I'm gonna forget you said that. Now, would you please go to the bathroom and put some clothes on? You know, I kind of like being in my robe. Does this offend you? Does it offend me? Does it offend me? Uh, frankly, yes, it does offend me, but that's not why I want you to do it. We don't know what these guys are going to do. They could pick up and, and, and take off in the middle of the night. We've mm. got to be prepared at all times. Look, I'm putting my coat on. Right. Bye. You know what? Yeah.
Kelly. Is that a two-legged rodent on four? And one on one. Scott, there's a guy on the roof and another guy in the hallway. Take the roof. Uh, thank you. Come on, do I have to deal with both of these guys myself? I'm heading for the roof. Right, right. I hate to do this. I really do. Uh, wouldn't you rather have a nice warm bath right now? A little Japanese lady walk no. up and down on your, uh, I don't, you know. I don't think you understand. It's numb. Look. Oh, well. No, 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 no. Here, see? Look. Okay, nothing. Here we go. Just pull it. Numb. Nothing. Ha-ha! <sighs> Who are those guys? I'm telling you, I had no idea that anybody was interested in this silly little biologist. Well, somebody else is. And this is not a kidnapping. Now, my guy had a 9 millimeter Makarov with a silencer. That's an assassin's gun. Now, I may be slow, but I can still see. Yeah, we definitely have a flag on the play. I got a fax of State Department. Somebody left something out of the mix. Anyway, I'm uh, glad I do not have to report that a nosy private citizen got himself shot, just maimed a little bit. Thank you. Same to you. But it was nice out there. You and me. Of course, I let my guy kick me. And you let your guy go, but it still felt good out there. You and me, huh? I don't mean to get sentimental. <laughs> okay, you can stay. Huh? You heard me. I know I can stay. I can stay as long as I want to stay. But do you want me to stay? <laughs> <clears throat> Say it. You want me to stay? <laughs> okay. Uh, you can stay. No, no, no. Not you can stay. You want me to stay. <clears throat> I don't mind if you stay a while. Close. Uh, why don't you stay if you have... <laughs> you want... Want to stay. Want? I want you to stay? No, without the question mark. I, I want, want you to stay, please. There you go. Oh, man. <laughs> 
Well, I don't know if I can spare the time. Would you please look at yourself? I mean, that's just exactly what I have always wanted as a partner for my sunset years, a fat man in a bucket. Look at him. I guess you're not hurt, right? I almost killed you out there. Look, I want him sent home right now. I'm making a formal request. I'm not exactly thrilled with this arrangement either. You have a job to do, both of you. Scotty and I are both here. That's that. Now, we're going to monitor the Resnikovs in shifts. He and I'll take the first one, turned over to you at 2 a.m. Until then, you are dismissed. You know, you were great at this when you were young. But this time you hurt yourself. Next time you're going to hurt me. Dad, please go home. Now. Dad? Well, I, how did it feel? I froze, Dad. You know, um, I really didn't expect you to... to no, to... you were fine. I'm really proud of you. Right. Thanks. Damn, if my dad hadn't have been there, I would have had those guys. Of course, you were a bust, Robinson. <laughs> yeah, I suppose I was. I got to admit, Nicole, you were pretty terrific. Oh, come on. You're supposed to say you suck, Scott. You're not supposed to get your feelings hurt. You were great. You know, actually, you were fine once you got started. It was... Hey, do you want a sandwich or a soda or something? I can call down to room service. Uh, no thanks. You know, my guy was packing a nine millimeter Makarov with a silencer. That was no kidnapping attempt, that was a murder attempt. My guy had a Makarov too. He was trying to kill me flat out. What? He knew what he was doing, he was trying to kill me. What if those guys were- You're reading my mind. That they weren't after the Reznikovs at all. He was trying to kill us. Piece of cake assignment, right? Oh, right. Feeling better, are we? Yes, thank you. Mr. Robinson, you know one of those guys shot at Bennett last night. I know, I saw it. Nicole and I think that these guys were not after the Resnikovs. They knew we were there and they were trying to kill us. Yes, so since we're in a life-threatening situation, aren't we in need to know, Chain? I mean, what is going on? Nicole, I don't know any more than you do. I've run up every red flag I know. I've faxed the State Department. Maybe somebody there will tell us why this little bug man is so important. Why are you still here? I asked him to stay. Kelly and I are the best there ever was, and there's nothing you can do about it, rookie. Hey. Do you see what I see basking over there? I thought someone would have put him to sleep by now. Who is he? Caesar Baruti. International anything you want. Terrorist, mercenary, assassin. A real sweetheart. Pulls wings off flies and arms and legs off people. Um, you two stay with the rest of the cops. Do you get the feeling that they're babysitting us? Yep. You know, I thought you were going to be really conceited. 
You're just a little uptight. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, you're not so bad yourself, rookie. Kelly, my dear fellow, is that a gun, or are you just glad to see me? Caesar, I am never glad to see you. Scotty, is it really you? I thought you were dead. I was. Caesar, I want you to get up because we are going into the hotel. The strawberries are good, aren't they? For a government? I couldn't tell you that, dear fellow. Diplomatic immunity. You know. Assassins don't get diplomatic immunity. And I claim that it is a privileged communication. All right. You have the privilege of communicating it while breathing underwater, down in the toilet bowl, Caesar. Can I do that? I haven't given anybody a swirly since Camp Happy. You wouldn't. <laughs> Who wouldn't? You would. Say no more. We professionals know when we are beaten, and we quietly fold our hands. I confess, gentlemen, the Chinese government has hired me to speak to Dr. Reznikov. Speak to him? You mean snatch him and kill two of our people in the process? Absolutely not. The Chinese want the doctor to work there. I'm only the go-between. Wait a minute. You didn't send two goons last night to knock out our agents so you could take Reznikov? Kelly, dear boy, you better believe me when I say I didn't, because, of course, if I didn't, then someone else did. Why would the Chinese government want Reznikov? As the messenger about to be murdered says to Cleopatra, I that do bring the news made not the match. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really must be going. I'm already late for a very important appointment. Is he telling the truth? I don't know, maybe. Caesar, you do know, if anything, happens to those two agents, you're dead. Scotty or I will find you and kill you. You gotta trust me in this. You might be killed first, Kelly. You never know. <laughs> Get out of here. I don't think so. I don't think so because I think you have a very short memory. I want the Vienna police to be able to hold him for a few days. Great. How? Have you forgotten Cairo when we were going through his room in Cairo, what he did? Whoa! Kai yeah, I have clean forgot about Cairo. <laughs> you wouldn't. Oh, step into my office here, please. Thank you very much. Never, You're inspired sometimes. I never huh? forget Cairo. <laughs> Pretty sight from behind. Rufen Sie die Polizei! Rufen Sie die Polizei! Got him now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, was that a lot of fun or what? Come on, you know it was a lot of fun. Say it was a lot of fun. Um, fun. Come fun. On. Guess where they sent my luggage and why it was late? Where? To France. How come? Because that's not where I'm going. Well, get this. State Department eyes only. Victor Reznikov developed a series of tropical rainforest viruses lethal to humans. If disseminated, could cause pandemic death. 
We want his research applied to medical venues. Other governments must not be allowed to have access to these viruses for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like our harmless little bug man goes around inventing things that could wipe out the entire population of the world. So much for your milk run, my friend. Look at him over there. Scratching his rear end and carrying some doomsday weapon around in his head. Come on, Ben. Where are you? What do you mean they're not there? Okay, not to panic. There's nothing missing except them. There's no reason to panic. It's Baruti. It's got to be Baruti. Oh Lord. Okay, I've got uh, I've got two other agents in Vienna. I can pull into this. You find Baruti. I got to stick with the Reznikovs until I can get my guys to take over. How am I going to find Baruti? Well, uh, he lives here. Start with the phone book. Here. You take the Mercedes. Come on. Naked. Can you possibly describe this naked man? Naked? There's, um, it's no, no, no clothing, uh, about five foot, uh, five foot ten, about, um, uh, dark hair and, uh, the skin all over his body. Naked! Ah, uh -huh. yeah, that naked man. Okay, all right, um, he, he's here. Now, may, may I see him, please? If we are talking about the same naked man, sir, then you cannot see him. He is gone. He paid his bail. Paid his bail? He had no money. He's naked. He, naked man has no, no pockets. Ah. Uh, time for lunch. Ah. Uh, did he leave an address? Don't have it. Okay. How do... Oh. The telephone book. The telephone book, okay? Cesar Baruti. It's one of the reasons I got out of this business. No, no, no. no, no. Mr. Robinson, I'm Tilden. Vines. Uh huh. Well, those are the Reznikovs. Right behind you, the guy with a bald head. Don't let him out of your sight. I want him back the way I'm giving him to you. Intact. Yeah. Scotty? Yeah. My backup's in place. Meet me at the hotel. Right. Now, what do we do? What do you mean, what do we do? I mean, they put the wolves in charge of the chickens. I know who to blame when the chickens are eaten. So what do we do? We wait. Okay, here's a plan. We wait till they get back. We surround and overpower them. This is the plan? Yeah, that's the plan. 
How do you suggest that we do this? First thing you have to do is just reach behind and untie the rope. How am I supposed to get over there? I didn't say it was going to be easy. I do not want my father to catch me like this. All right, come on, it's not over with yet. I know what we can do. Use my Swiss Army knife. You have a Swiss Army knife? Yes. It's just back at my desk in Virginia. I'm Cesar Barudi, a friend of both your fathers. Yeah, we heard about you. So what are you going to do with this? I'll hold you, of course. I have a very large stake in Viktor Reshnikov, and I need to keep Kelly and Scotty out of the way. Well, if you want my opinion, you should be more worried about us. Then I've done the right thing. I've put you out of action. In any case, when I contact your fathers, they will desist from interfering with me in return for my not killing you. Tell me, what is so important about this Reshnikov? Let's just say he will amplify the lifestyle I so richly deserve. <laughs> Look, I don't want to interrupt you guys, but if I'm going to be tied up all night, I need to use the bathroom. Is that okay? Would you untie my feet, please? Of course, dear girl. Excuse me. If you need to wash... <laughs> chance of the man stuff now I gotta do it myself well you're the man how did you find him anyway <laughs> yeah well I thought it would be there Make a run for it. Okay. You want to cover me? Cover you. That's something you never hear in the language arts department. Cover me. Go ahead. Okay. Huh? Cover me. I'll bring you across. Rest. What? Rest. You said you wanted to be in on this. I know, but you can't. You're not in charge. I'm ready. Right. What's the matter with you? What? You're not that quick. You run across here now, they can hit you with a rock. I am now, and I always was an athlete. Help yourself. Come on. Right. Sonic waves. Sonic waves? Well, it's very complex. And it's uh, 
kind of difficult language to understand. Now go on in. That's two, and that's all you get. Check all the way upstairs. Mm -hmm. Get the feeling that you're walking down the middle of the street and everybody's on the rooftops. Yeah. Well, Marshal, some of them got into the house. Sounds like they're trying to get out. Go ahead. Tell them to come out with their hands. Up. Where are you going? I'm going to answer the door. Can't answer the door? What for? I guess you're right. After all, it's not my house. I'm going to answer this door. We're going to. Doesn't matter. Kids are here someplace. We've got to keep going. On three. Three. Okay. Knock, knock. Who's there? Dishes. That's who? I hate knock-knock jokes. Gentlemen, welcome to my home. Your father isn't answering. This is not good. <sighs> come in. Anybody in this channel, please. Come in. Anybody in this channel. This is Agent Tilden. Who are you? Who are you? Uh, we're Agents Robinson and Scott. What do you want? Listen, we're trying to get a hold of Agents Robinson and Scott. You just said you were Robinson and Scott. I understand we're Agents Robinson and Scott. Here, what I need to find... Hello, this is Agent Nicole Scott. I'm here with Agent Ben Robinson. Where are the other agents, Robinson and Scott? I want to find you. We're temporary replacements. Okay. Um, stay put. Will do. What happened? Well, they realized we're missing, but now they're out looking for us. Oh, great. Would they figure that Baruti had us? Who else have they got? You think they can find the villa? Of course they can, which means they're in trouble. Let's go. No, 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 wait a minute. We have a job. Our fathers can take care of themselves. Yeah, well, maybe your father can take care of himself, but my father's a college professor, remember? If anything happens to him... <laughs> if anything happens to him? I can't believe I'm hearing this. You're the one that's supposed to say that the mission comes first. I'm the one that is supposed to want to go save our fathers. <laughs> I think your armor is chinking. Yeah, well, bonus point for you. I'm not perfect. You know, I had a fleeting thought that if my father were to disappear from the face of the earth, I wouldn't have to be an SSA agent anymore. <laughs> You're being very naughty, Robinson. I said fleetingly. Let's go. What is that bird looking at? <laughs> Your children are very resourceful. 
I should look to my laurels if I were you, Kelly, old man. I mean, they got away and you got captured. Time to retire? Oh, go fly your bird. We were holding them to draw you here, and uh, here you are, all dressed up and nowhere to go. <laughs> and here you stay until I've safely delivered Dr. Reznikov to the Chinese for, shall we say, a seven-figure sum? Don't look so sorry for yourselves. As ye sow, so shall ye reap. How's your head? Don't even talk to me. Mine too, thanks for asking. Glad it was your head and not some place where they could really hurt you. I thought you were supposed to be so much smarter now. I didn't fall for any knock-knock joke. You're so smart, how come? I'm back in the same old locked room. 25 years this hasn't happened to me. Explain that, Mr. Chips. Quite easily. You're lying. Yeah. Listen, I still owe you a punch in the mouth from the start of this mess. You want it now? Come on, take your best shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Big John, you just wait right there. I'm a-coming. Come on, I, I don't have all day. Really? Well, as long as you got nothing else to do and other people are doing all the work for you, maybe you'd like to explain to me why you quit me? I've always wanted to know. It's personal. Personal? It was personal, was it? What was I, Aunt Martha from out of town? I'm still wearing a dumb ring you gave me. Oh. Personal, I think that allows me into your personal loop. Yes, please, I want an answer. You're tired. Huh? Tired. I'm tired of what? I'm tired of getting killed every day. Met a woman, fell in love. I wanted to have a family, and I have a daughter. Daughter? Your daughter? Yes. I wouldn't bring her up right now. I wouldn't even think about her. Because she's going to walk in here any minute and catch us like this. You've got a picture of that? She'd probably take a picture of this. She would, too. And send it to Washington. There goes my corner office. Oh, there goes everything. I can't do this, man. My fingers are dead. Okay, that's it. That's it. We're getting out of here. We're gonna get out of here. I don't care what it takes. Blow on my dead fingers, oh Swami. Bring them back to life. Keep working. Come on. Oh, God. I gotta do this. You know, I'm thinking. I got the kid you should have had. Yeah. And I got the kid you should have had. clothes that are around here someplace it gotta be they wouldn't take that we're gonna get our clothes and get out of here and they'll never even know we were here well it certainly took you long enough where in the world have you been do you realize how long we've been sitting here can't you do anything right sit up and take it like a man i have arthritis ah wait a minute all, all right wait a minute come back here Come back, Ben, don't walk away from your father this way. Come back here and turn us loose. 
I said, come back. I'm the authority here. I'm the head of field operations. Scotty and I'll talk to the resident coughs and let them know who we are. Find out when they can leave. Mr. Robinson, let Ben and I handle this. I mean, you gave us this assignment. Give us a chance to do it. You should have stayed with the resident coughs and not come after us. You still have a lot to learn. The answer is no. Well, so far, you have managed to let our major adversaries get away and then get yourself captured. Come on, it's elevator Do you want to go on working for this agency? <sighs> yes, I want to keep working for this agency. Okay, we are going to continue as we are. As a what? A team? A team. A four-fold team. Call it a new concept and mixed up. Wow, we're all stuck with each other. Look at it this way. Each one of us has something the other one lacks. We have experience, you guys have youth. Yes, but the only difference is we are eventually going to get experience. If you can live that long, sister. Everything okay? Yeah. Everything's quiet. You're dismissed, then. So what do you think you'd be doing if you weren't doing this? I don't know. Probably teach. Hopefully someplace where I could still watch attractive women clean pistols in exotic places. You think I'm attractive? Mm. Yeah. And I kind of freeze scuzzballer or blow your head off kind of way. <laughs> I do not say that. Ah, uh, the day is still young. <laughs> Fine. Well, I just have a different style than you. A better style. Of course, you know, your agent profile says that you're very methodical. So maybe you could methodical an assassin to death. Ouch. <laughs> Let me ask you something. What, where would you be if you weren't doing this? I don't know. I'd be doing this. I'd just be doing it with somebody else. Nicole, <laughs> you are breaking my heart. <laughs> Hi, Lily. How are you? Yes, yes, and I miss you. Well, no, see, I'm I, not now be, because I have to confess I'm no longer in Paris. No, I'm not on my way home. I'm in Vienna, dear. Vienna? What are you doing? Yes, Vienna. Uh, Vienna. Well, we, we had to move here because, dear, they shot one of the lexicographers. Yes, just I don't know why. So they moved it here. The Viennese people are going to stand between us. Now, Dr. Clark is here to help me represent our side, and this professor, uh, yes. And, and I love you too, dear. Yes, you, you really have to go. Hey, your salad's getting cold. And so is my wife. That was the coldest I love you I think she's going to divorce me very, very soon because of this and leave me with nothing but my thoughts. Well, not to worry. Tomorrow morning, first thing, we're going to go see the Reznikovs, get straight with them, and you can catch a plane. I'm grateful that you watch out for me. I know 
Many people want to make me use my work for evil things. This I do not want. I know I've created a thing that can be a terrible plague for everybody in the world if wrong people get it. And that is why Sentina and I want to go to America. I want to turn my research for medicine, not for destruction. Victor is great man, yes? Scotty, look out! It's a laser. Must have come from across the street. There. Where? Right there. Okay, I got it. You stay with them. Got away. I think it was Rudy? Maybe. It wasn't for Rudy. What? Look, this doesn't track. Rudy doesn't want to kill Reznikov. This is something else. Stay down! Take them now. I'll get the car. Guys? What the hell is this? CIA? My guys are CIA? Same. Sir, it's a Makarov, 9mm with a silencer. Hey! He's got him! Get the car! came in surprised me. I'm all right. I got one of them, though. Oh, slug. So stupid. I'm all right. I'm all right. The guy behind him threw him. His friend at me, and then he hit me in the head. I, I got one guy. Well, one guy's better than none. <laughs> Tried to kill Reznikov. It was our guys, my own men. Why? I don't know. I wish I did. I think it has something to do with the CIA trying to knock off ex-KGB agents. The Reznikovs are KGB? No, it's not. Okay, that's them right there.
reasons I got out of this business. Uh, that one's gonna have a headache. How are you doing back there? Oh, we are Russian. We are good at survival. Is that really necessary? You win some and you lose some, Rudy. I'm beginning to think I've lost more than I've won. Yeah, well, the Chinese are gonna have to find their own biologists. They would have had to in any case. What do you mean by that? Oh, I was working for China, dear boy, but I began to wonder if there weren't greener pastures, so I approached my old friend Saddam, and yes, he was extremely happy to pay me three million pounds sterling for Dr. Rish. Saddam Hussein, you sold Reznikov to Iraq? Have you no shame oh. left? Get out of there. Here, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold it, hold it. Yeah. Spare me, please. Yeah. It was your friend, too, not so long ago. Do you know he loves puppies? It's quite sweet to see him playing with his darling little shepherd. I've enjoyed our time together. I'd quite forgotten about Cairo. <laughs> I'd have won this bout. But the match is far from over. I'll see you again, old buddy. Then again, I won't be bloody. How's that for good driving? <laughs> well, now we get a new car. You had a lot of doubts coming into this, didn't you? About yourself. Yeah, I did. Well, that's the great part about coming through a mess. You get out on the other side, you look back, no more doubts. Well, I wouldn't know. I've still got them. You were terrific. You were dead center all the way. Not about me. It's you I'm worried about. Me? Look. I got into this because you wanted it. And I thought that was important, but man, I resented it. I hated training. I hated being the boss's son. I hated everything about it at first. But now, I see I'm good at this. I'm really good. I'm on the case, Dad. And the better I get, the better I like it and me. So I'm just fine. But if I ever catch you in my rearview mirror again or sneaking around on my tail or taking down notes on how I brush my teeth then you and I are quits boss I'm out of here Ben this is a standard operational procedure am I clear on this it's perfectly... am I clear yes sir Dad, you gonna let Mom know where you've been all this time? Yeah, I'm gonna tell her everything and then move. <laughs> <laughs> Would you follow me up here if I was your son and not your daughter? I know Mr. Robinson told you how good I was. I mean, that I had the best scores in SSA training. If I was a football player, I would have been the Heisman Trophy winner. I mean, number one NFL draft pick. But there you are up in the stand and you want to come and catch the ball for me. <laughs> Dad, did you know any women agents when you were working? Yeah. Were they good? Oh, yeah. They could shoot. And you respected them. Well, that's me. But, now see, the question is, though, <laughs> is on my next assignment, are you gonna be hiding in the bushes somewhere, ready to jump out? Because...
I just figure this thing out. If Tilden and Vines were part of a group trying to get rid of ex-KGB people, then why would they try to kill Reznikov? It doesn't make any sense. He's not KGB. What if it wasn't him they were trying to kill? We are going to China. China? Oh, well, we haven't been there in a long time. Uh, are you current on your Chinese? It's not a romance language. I'm sorry. So you made a deal with the Chinese before your husband approached our man in Moscow. So what was the big charade with Baruti? Why didn't you just take Victor straight to China? Because I did not want him to know about me. I wanted him to believe that we had both been taken to China by force. You are great men, Victor. But I cannot allow you to repudiate communism. I love you, my little Bosch. But we are going to China. <laughs> Did you see that? No, I was out of the room at the time. Would you draw pictures for me? What a team, huh? Team? <laughs> Don't kid me. I'm going to Athens, you're going to the station in Damascus, right? Hello, I'm not talking about us, I'm talking about them. They must have been great. Oh, they still are. What? Nothing. What? Nothing. <laughs> so is that Athens posting still a sure thing? My dad set it up. Why? I was just thinking it gets kind of hot in Syria this time of year and... Okay, Bennett. Bennett? Look, if I decide to keep you on as my partner, and that's if, you've got to loosen up. I mean, it's just... You loosen up. I'm as loose as mashed potatoes. Yeah, right. What is that screen thing? You know, that's, that's ridiculous. We might have to share another room again. Why the president's talking about the economy, we may have to share more than a room. Exactly, that's my point. Exactly, so that's, that's, that's your point. You. Why don't you just stay as... Well, it certainly looks like it's the right place. For violin. Well, no violins. Mm -hmm. Hats and horns all over now. Okay, all right. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, another 25 years? Ah, uh, no. Longer. Ah, uh, longer. I wish I could swallow that, but you know it gets stuck in my craw right about there. You seriously expect me to believe after all this that I get custody of the kids and you go back to your sorry, dinky, little boring classroom for the rest of your days? Exactly. Oh, come on. The first time Nicole calls you and says, gee, Dad, I'm up against some bad guys, this time you're going to be on the next plane. Mm -hmm. Nicole's not going to call. Nicole is not going How do Nicole you know? Nicole is not going to go. Pass it on. Gee, that's the worst thing I ever heard of. Right. Wouldn't you think so? <laughs> yeah. She doesn't call you. It's going to eat at you from the inside out. I know you. One day you're going to find yourself on an airplane. Don't even know how you got there. Ready to start this whole thing all over again. Yes, you are. It's written all over your face. I can see it. Listen, you're a civilian. You're not permitted to even think about it. Well, I want some kind of guarantee that you won't ever do this again. Guarantee? Yes, a guarantee. Here, just sign this and go straight into a locked safe. Now, what is this again? It's the right one, isn't it? It's reenlistment. Well, nobody's ever going to see it unless you go crazy and uh, jump into something, get yourself killed, then I have a little protection. Now, what in the world could be wrong with that? Thank you. Hey, where are you going with my... All right, go ahead, and I hope you don't think for one minute that you can come back here on your hands and knees ever and expect anything from me, because I'm through, and I'm in it, Stanley. So long, pard. Radical lexicographers uh, wanting to.
to go to violence, to getting guns, they broke into the police station, took bazookas and all kinds of things. And uh, are you following me on this? <laughs> I just wish you'd get it out and let me know how Nicole did on her first assignment. But, uh, Nicole, did, you know? Of course, Nicole tells me everything. <sighs> I told her to call you. Do you know where she was? No, but I knew she was somewhere. You let me tell all of these ridiculous, embarrassing lies to you on the telephone mm. for three days. Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was enjoying them, honey. Oh. They were very inventive. Yeah. I'm so proud of you for going out to make sure our little girl was safe. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. She's good, too. Yeah? Yeah, she's good. The big question mm. is, yes. are you going back? Have you lost yourself? Look, I got hit in the head. Oh, let me give it a kiss. There you go. That's much better. Okay. <laughs> Just him. <laughs> 